Hi, welcome to the study of marketing. My name is Kim Donahue and I'm going to be leading you through this tour of the subject matter. Marketing is kind of a funny subject to study initially because most people have a lot of preconceived ideas of what marketing is and they're usually really wrong. So we're going to start off by taking a look at that for a minute here. Okay, Marketing really comes down to people's perceptions, what they think about when they see products, when they see advertisements, when they see a price on a product. What most people's perceptions turn out to be many times is that marketing's all about advertising, using a lot of pressure to try and sell you something you don't want. It also has the perception that many advertisements are, are deceptive, that we lie to try and get your business, to try and get those sales. Well, my response to this might surprise you. That's true. A lot of what I just said is true. But that is not what the role of marketing is. And for businesses who really want to be effective in what they do and they really want long-term uh, profitability and success, they've got to implement what marketing is true about, truly about. And what marketing is truly about is satisfaction. If we can determine what customers want and get it to them in the best way possible, to the places where they shop and very efficiently, at good prices, and we communicate through our advertisements to let them know it's available, that satisfaction is going to be there. And that's going to be long, much more profitable in the long run instead of trying to push our product onto somebody. So. While what we said previously is true in some circumstances, it is not true all the time. In fact, marketing can be used for good or marketing can be used for evil. And we are going to concentrate, of course, on how to use it appropriately, how to use it for good. As we go through this course, though, I will acknowledge when it is frequently misused. And hopefully in your business career, you can avoid that trap. So let's start talking about what marketing actually is. We're going to start with the textbook definition. Okay, This is in your textbook. Marketing is an organizational function and a set of processes for creating, communicating, and delivering value to customers and for managing customer relationships in ways that benefit the organization and its stakeholders. Now you look at this and your standpoint probably is this sounds like every definition I've ever heard in any textbook. From my viewpoint, this is a great definition. It really tells you a lot about the heart and soul of marketing. And so I'm going to pull out some key components here for us to talk about. The key components of this definition we are going to look at individually are the fact that it is an organizational function that we're creating, communicating, and delivering value. We're dealing with customers and customer relationships. And finally, that it benefits an organization as well as, a as well as the shareholders. Okay, now let's take a look at each of these individually. Okay, the first one, organizational function. Marketing is a support function. Okay, it exists only to achieve the organization's goals. You will find people in marketing, as in any discipline, who think their area is the be-all and the end-all. Okay? Marketing can't be that way if it's going to be effective. We have to fit into the organization. We have to understand what the organization needs from us, and we have to provide that, working with other areas of the business. Now, that may not make a lot of sense yet, but hopefully within a few minutes it will. The second component of the definition, creating, communicating, and delivering value. Officially, we call that the marketing mix. This is the heart and soul, the very basics of what marketing is. It's more commonly known as the four P's, which we'll go through in just a moment. Okay. In fact, the term the four P's, if you tell anybody who has taken marketing at any time that you're taking this course right now, I can pretty well guarantee you they'll say, oh, you're learning about the four P's. Now, I can't guarantee they'll be able to tell you what those four P's are. But four P's, again, are the heart and soul. And I'll make you anticipate until we get there in a moment. Okay, the other key components of that definition, customer and customer relationship. 
Okay, when we talk about customers, we tend to think about consumers because that's what we are. We may be dealing with consumers, and when we do, we call that B2C, meaning business to consumer. We're focusing on consumers. And consumers are people who are buying product for their own personal use. However, we are also dealing with B2B, business to business. And in actual dollar sense, more money is spent on B2B marketing than B2C. So in this course, we're going to focus a little bit more on B2C, on the consumers, because that's something we all have a frame of reference for, we've all experienced. But we will be talking quite a bit about B2B as well, because again, that's where most marketing dollars are spent. With our customers, whichever they happen to be, we are interested in building a long-term relationship. It just makes sense. If we keep a customer happy now, we do everything in our power to keep them satisfied, to fix problems, to bring them back. Even if we experience a short-term loss in doing that, we are going to be profitable in the long run. Something we'll be talking about a lot in this course is the lifetime value of a customer. And that's the approach we have to take. Maybe we're going to lose $200 on this sale by fixing this problem, by dealing with it. But over the lifetime of the customer, not only in repeat purchases they'll be making, but in referrals they'll be making, they could be worth thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars. We want to keep that business. It's much cheaper to keep a customer than it is to get a new one. Okay, the fourth component of the definition is it benefits the organization and shareholders. This means that we're not just satisfying the customer, but we want to achieve the organizational objectives, and we also have to benefit the community. The community is society as a whole, it's the other companies that we work with, our suppliers, the companies that we sell to, and we work with like transportation agencies, etc. Everybody is affected by what we do, and we need to have an ethical and socially responsible viewpoint as we deal with these other organizations. Okay, now, later on in the semester, we will talk about that in more detail because there's a lot of controversy involved in that statement, believe it or not. A lot of people believe that a company's social responsibility is to make a profit, and that's it. And I can understand that view. But on the other extreme, people believe that a company's social responsibility is to make the community they're a part of better. And I see that view too. So we're going to be talking about those two extremes and, and what's in the middle as we go through the course. Okay, so now you have a very basic idea of what marketing is. Kind of. You don't understand what we do still. So that's what we're going to take a look at now. What I said was the heart and soul of marketing is known officially as the marketing mix or the four P's. And these are the specific activities or specific strategies that we go through. Let me go through them with you one at a time. The first one is product. Now product is a very comprehensive view from a marketing standpoint. We're not just looking at the tangible good. For example, I'm holding up here this wireless mouse. A number of you may be familiar with wireless mice, mouses, whatever. Um, some of you may not. When I'm buying this, what am I buying? I'm not buying just this tangible piece. I am also buying convenience, the ability to walk all over the place if I want to, I am buying technology, I'm buying a brand name, and that's what we're looking at from the marketing standpoint. Exactly what does a customer get when they give us their money for the product? Okay, so we take a much more comprehensive view. Part of that is research. Okay? And a lot of good people don't go into marketing because they're worried about not having a lot of good ideas, not being creative enough to come up with new pro product ideas. Most new product ideas are the result of research. Okay, let me show you something over here for just a moment. Okay. All right. Here is a product most of you are probably very familiar with. Cool Mint Listerine Pocket Packs. 
who in the right mind would come up with the idea that we can take a product, make it look like a piece of scotch tape that people can put on their tongue, and they'll get fresh breath, and they'll feel very confident. This is not an idea that people sit around thinking about and come up with. This came the, as a result of research. We would interview, if we were Listerine, a lot of different people, and we'd talk to them about their mouthwash usage how they use it, what they like, what don't they like. These are very involved interviews. The result of all these interviews would probably be that people use mouthwash because they feel very confident. It makes them feel able to go out in public and face people. But what they don't like about their mouthwash is the burn, the taste, the fact that they're tied to a sink to use it, that it's kind of inconvenient. So Listerine devised a product that would provide the benefits people liked and get rid of most of those negatives. And that's where new ideas come from, from that research. Okay, I mentioned branding is important, which it is. People trust brand names. Listerine's a perfect example again. You know, if it says Listerine on it, most people are willing to try it. If it said Joe's mouthwash, we might be a little more skeptical. Packaging is another important issue. To give you an example of how a package can make a difference, this is a new way of packaging prescription medications. Okay, it's, it's a method that Target is using. It makes the pill container able to stand up, has different color rings for different members of your family so you don't get confused. It has a flat side to it which makes the label easier to read. It's a small change, but it makes a big difference. The product that's being used inside is the same. Nothing's changed. It's the package that provided a benefit. Okay, and then we want to keep in mind that when people are looking at a product, it's the benefit that they're looking for. Why are they buying this? What do they really want? Okay, the second of the four Ps is place. Actually, a better term for place is distribution. However, if we use the term distribution, then we would have three P's and a D, and that'd be stupid. So we stick with place. Place is telling us the location of our uh, stores, where we're going to be selling it, what outlets, the transportation methods we're going to be doing, how to get the product to the customer, inventory, how we're going to store it, where, how much. And a concept that we use in here is something called a value chain. And this is the idea that we are going to use our channel, our distribution channel, to provide value. Now a distribution channel are all the organizations involved from the manufacturer to the end user. Um, for example, a manufacturer sells a product to a wholesaler who will sell it to a retailer and the retailer will sell it to the consumer. That is known as a distribution channel. The idea with the channel is that every organization involved needs to add value. Okay. If they can't, then we need to change our channel. And we'll, of course, we'll discuss that more later in the course. Our third element of the marketing mix is promotion. And this is the one that most people think of when they think of marketing. It is the flashiest. What you probably don't realize, though, is the role of promotion, as you can see I have listed different types up there, is communication. Okay. This is our way of communicating with our customers what our image is, what our values as a company are, if we think our product's a fun product, a gourmet product, a luxury product, if we think our product is a high quality, where we're going to sell it, how much we're going to sell it for. How are we going to let you know these things? It's through our advertisements, it's through our salespeople, which is called personal selling. Or it can be through our giveaways, which is one type of sales promotion, where we just give out free samples or we give coupons or rebates. Okay, the final of the four P's is price. And this is probably the most straightforward, however it is trickier than what you might initially think. When we set a price, that price has to do a number of things. We have to set a price that the customer is willing 
and able to pay, that price also has to be competitive and it has to be profitable to the organization and to the channel members. Okay, so those are the four P's. Those are the basic strategies that we work on in marketing, trying to satisfy the customer. So there comes that word again, satisfaction. Let's talk about that for a moment. Satisfaction is also known as utility. If you've taken an economics course, you have probably talked about utility before. Economists tend to focus on a measurement of satisfaction. They talk about utils. In marketing, we talk about utility as methods of providing satisfaction, and I'm going to go through those methods pretty quickly here. The first type is a form utility. And a form utility means we change the tangible aspects of a product so it appeals to the customer. Um, an example would be any product that is customized. You go into a restaurant and order an 8 ounce prime rib, medium rare, blackened. Okay. Well, that is being prepared exactly how you want it. That's form utility. You go to a florist and ask for a bouquet consisting of specific flowers. That's form utility. Okay. Or, let me show you an example here. A new type of cup, plastic cup that Hefty is now offering. Okay, it's a disposable cup, and the only thing that's different is it has little rough edges here where your fingers go. And the idea that's easier to grip and people are less likely to let the cup slip through their hands once condensation has started on the cup. Very little change, but what it's doing is changing the tangible aspects of the product to satisfy the customer. Place utility means we're having the product available where the customer wants it. That may be online, that may be at your favorite sporting goods store, it may be at a mass merchandiser, but we know what our customers' shopping behaviors are, and so we want to get our product to them. Time utility means we have it available when the customer wants it. If you have a product you know is going to be a hot Christmas item, for example, you're going to start producing it in March, April, May, of the, before Christmas and you're going to store it, you're going to hold that inventory so that when the customer wants it, it'll be available at that time. Possession utility means we price our product or we provide financing so that the customer can actually take ownership. Now this last utility that I'm going to mention here is not in your textbook. And this is called image utility. In your mind, when I say Heineken beer, picture who might be drinking that beer. And then compare it to the drinker of a Bud Light. You probably have a completely different picture of the individual, different ages, different clothing, different hobbies, different cars. All sorts of things are different. But beer is direct substitute. Okay? It, it's the same product, a Heineken and a Bud Light. Now, some of you might get very upset that I said that. But I'm willing to bet if you are a loyal to your brand beer drinker and I take you store to buy you beer and they're out of your brand, I am really sure you're going to get a different brand. I've never known a beer drinker to say, you don't have my brand? Oh, okay, I'll do without. It doesn't happen. They are direct substitutes. Now, there's differences in formulation, so you do have preferences. But aside from that, why do you have such a drastic different image between these two products? A lot of it's because of the promotion. It's the pricing, too, and the packaging, the way it's styled. People buy products that fit their self-image most of the time. So when we design our product, we want to make sure that the image it projects appeals to the group of customers we're trying to reach. Okay, now I've just said these are the five methods we use to satisfy customers. Let's compare those two a minute to the four P's that we just went over, which are the activities that we do. Can these methods supply the satisfaction? To provide form utility, that is a function of product. Now the form, the actual production of the tangible product, will be done by our manufacturing department. 
However, it's done with the input of our research. Place, having the product where the customer wants it, is a function of distribution, as is the time element. Possession utility is provided by our pricing strategy. And then finally, image utility. While image can be provided by any of these and all of them, the strongest tie is with promotion. Okay, one more concept we're going to talk about in this segment, and that is the concept of value. I want to try and get you away from thinking about value in the common usage. Value in today's terminology usually means cheap. You know, it's a good value, buy it. It's probably very inexpensive. That's not what value actually is. Value means you're getting more than your money's worth. Okay, so the idea here, one of the ideas, is it involves an exchange. You're giving up something of value to get something of value. Usually that's going to be you're spending money to get a product, but it could be you're giving up your vote to get a platform or a politician that you strongly believe in, or you're giving blood or donations to help an organization in order to feel like you're helping community, that you're doing something for your fellow man. We also want to keep in mind to provide value to our customer, we have to provide some kind of competitive advantage, meaning we do something better than the competition. And that word better is key. Doing it the same isn't going to help our profit. And then finally, Keep in mind that all of this is coming from the customer's perspective. Not what we at a business think is a good value, but what the customer thinks, what their perception of that is. Okay, so in summary, let's talk about what we tried to mention here. Marketing is seeking to satisfy the customer and their needs and wants. Our whole objective is to satisfy that customer. If done properly and ethically, marketing is going to benefit the organization, the customer, and society. And finally, on a more personal note, studying marketing can benefit you as a student, as a consumer, and as an employee. To give you an example of the employee, what if you go into a job interview and the person asks you, why should I hire you? Now that's a very common question. The typical response is because I, I do this, I do this, I'm good at this, I'm good at that, whatever. That's not a very effective answer. A better answer is because I know that your company is trying to do this and here's how I can help you do it. Because I know you have a need for this and I have a strength in that area. It's looking at them as a customer.